sorry, I meant to record this earlier just so that others will be able to see it in case they can't make this, uh, this webinar. Okay, good. Yeah, feel free to put them on the discussion board if you need to with the chat board, or if you want to just certainly unmute and feel free to ask them. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna share my complicated screen and I'm gonna go over the, the first page in Moodle. Oh, there we go. All right. So hopefully here you can see that I opened up the, the first page on, on the online learning, learning platform. You should, all should have been able to log in with your logins. If you go to log in and you feel like your login does not work, please email me. Um, usually there's a 10% typo rate. So sometimes we just typed your password in maybe incorrectly and left the number out. So any problems logging in, feel free to just give me an uh, email or, or I think my number's on, you can text me and we can get you squared away pretty quickly. So any technical problems you have, don't be shy about reaching out to me directly. And I'll always try and kind of get it resolved in a few hours. I'm usually fairly available. In the top section of the, of the uh, online platform, you'll see a video introduction. Jim recorded a 16 minute video introduction kind of taking you through the program, discussing the eight modules. He'll go, he goes over basically the examination sequence and the grading sequences. The Cliff Notes version of this are, is, is, is generally what I've given you. Each module has a 10 to 15 question, you know, cumulative, cumulative final for, the, for each module. So the first lumbar module of a final that can be taken as many times as you like and passing grade is a 70. When we get to the cumulative written final at the end, again, we have a we have practice finals there and we will mentor you through the written final going over those questions as well. So. Again, it shouldn't be a point of stress because you'll be well prepared of it. And again, if it all goes to have a bad day on that one, we'll be more than happy to get you another makeup exam. So first thing we have on the top there is the video introduction from Jim. The second link is the discussion board. Here's where you can post questions and we'll post questions to the group. We'll use certain cases we'll post up there for people, for people to respond to and feed in if you have questions about the material. If you miss a Zoom session and want to post a question about the blogs and the Zoom session videos, you, you can use the discussion board to put up your question or also answer questions from your cohort mates. Uh, what we have in here in the book section is this is the orthopedic differential diagnosis in physical therapy. This is a book by Jim Meadows and some of the course reading will be the, some of the chapters out of this book. So for instance, for the first lumbar module, the recommended reading will be the chapter on uh, biomechanical assessment and also the chapter on the lumbar spine differential diagnosis. So that's new to this cohort. Hi, Eric, how are you? And we're going over the what's on the, on the online platform. We've gone over the video introduction, the discussion board, and we've also this year put up uh, Jim's orthopedic differential diagnosis book and the chapters in them for them is course reading. Uh, we have a program outline there, which is the program outline on top just discusses the different, the different courses in the program and what you'll expect in the learning expectations from each of them. The next link down you'll see will be the, the video and Zoom mentoring schedule for module one and two. This will change a little bit. I'm actually gonna update this. And in this section here, we are gonna put the links to Jim's pre-recorded learning sessions that will pertain to each Zoom session. So for instance, the Zoom session coming up on the 29th, Jim has recorded one discussing general themes of differential diagnosis, as well as different types of pain you may see from somatic to radicular to visceral. So those presentations will be linked. Let me open it up within this document. And it's gonna change just a little bit, probably the next day as I, I post the linked videos. And the linked videos will be here on the left-hand side and the corresponding course dates will be here on the right. So as you progress through the program, what you're gonna be able to see is that you can go back to Zoom session one, which will be here and go over the theoretical methods or the differential diagnosis and also pain there. And as you get into Zoom session two, you'll be go over, able to go over those in selective tissue tension testing. So at any point, if you miss one, you'll be able to go back and review what's been put up there. Or if at a later date, you wanna go back and review that material, it should all be organized Post it in here and we'll create a link for each document. 
may also jointly post it in Facebook, but we don't want to kind of send you different places all the time. We can chat about that. If people prefer to have things fed to them, that may be something we'd be willing to try out as posting things on Facebook to see how well that works as a method to get material out to people. So your feedback would be helpful for that. The last thing in the top section that we're really using is the condition strips. And the condition scripts are scripts that are used and it's based on script focused deductions. So throughout the course in the module, we'll use these as a reference thing. To, so when we look at lower back pain, it's understanding what are the typical signs of different very conditions that you'll see normally from disc herniation to central stenosis to spondylolisthesis, you know, we go into sacroiliitis, viscerogenic pain, somatic dysfunction. So this is a nice quick reference. And we have it here for about six or seven different conditions. And this is just nice as a quick reference saying, what is my starting point in the clinical reasoning process? What do these typical cases look like? And we'll use this kind of throughout the program. Yeah. Go back now. The first module, which is now open, is assessment and treatment of the lumbar spine. As you can see on the top here, the recommended readings from Jim's book are the biomechanical exam, which is chapter nine and chapter 12, which is the lumbar spine and orthopedic differential diagnosis of physical therapy. So these are the recommended readings to kind of go along with the coursework and the discussion we'll be doing. Um, within there, there's a pre-course assessment. So we have a pre-course assessment in there just to kind of test your base knowledge on general topics to see how you're doing. We do have um, course in here, we have lumbar course, uh, there's manuals, which are slides. This is background material that we had like to have people review. It's stuff that will be included in the program we will discuss. We won't necessarily teach from these slides, but this is just foundational information for the module that we feel is important. So this, these slides, and there's probably about 160 of them, are worth reviewing to see. And as you go through them, you may find that 80% of this material you're very comfortable with. It might be 20% that you're not as comfortable with. And that gives you a sense that, okay, I'll review that 20% that I'm not comfortable with. And the 80% I'm good with, I'm ready to go. And that'll help you keep well prepared for the program. But then there is also a skills list. The skills list I'm gonna click on. And the skills list here is a document you can download. And within this link are all the skills that are covered on the first module. And you'll find it in this one that in module one, the scanning exam principles and the scan exam is essentially covered as well as sacroiliac evaluation, and then the biomechanical assessment of the lumbar spine, stability testing, and also mobilizations and several manipulation techniques are taught in this one. And also, we also include a quick overview of the hip and one of the manipulative techniques for the hip is generally included in the first module. Now, sometimes if an instructor runs behind, the beauty of having eight modules is, is that we can then kind of make it up in the next module. But what you'll find in here is a video link to many of the skills that you'll be learning on the first weekend. And it may seem daunting in a lot right now, but once you have a whole weekend to go over it, you'll find that you'll be able to move through this material fairly efficiently following the first weekend cohort. And if you can't, what's great about this is that this is a great reference for after the cohort. So what I don't like people to do is stress about having to learn all these techniques prior to the weekend because you'll get the chance to refine these techniques. And again, continue to refine them in module two and module three and module four. So you'll get a great deal of time to refine the techniques. So don't feel overwhelmed initially about feeling you need to learn these techniques prior to module one. It's good to familiarize yourself with these videos, but they certainly do not need to be memorized. So lumbar course manual and slides. Again, this is the background information that we recommend you review uh, to just make sure that, okay, I am familiar with this material and anything that you're not familiar with, then certainly it's a good time to then go back and re refresh that. There's additional fellowship material included in here, in here. Now, within each cohort, there's usually several fellows that may be also taking the courses as well. Fellows have additional reading requirements to kind of round out the fellowship curriculum. This is not required in the certification but this material is here if you care to review it. And within there, you're gonna find just a, a much more eclectic reading list. So within there, we're gonna find that we've had different articles pulled out that cover different concepts in the lumbar spine. And again, approaching from 
other points of views as far as lumbar instability to hybrid approaches to back pain, which has been published recently, and some of the work of Hodges and some of his current concepts that are in there. So there's some articles in here that kind of round out some of the other side of manual therapy, and that's really for fellows. But again, most of you here are taking the certification program, so that won't be a requirement for you, but it's there if you are curious or have questions about fellowship, then certainly talk to Eric or myself. At the end of each module, there is a post-course final, and we'd like you to also fill out a faculty course assessment. Once you've done these two, then you, what you'll be able to do is then go in and it'll print out a certificate for you. So then you can download your certificate for CEUs. And as we progress through this, we'll have a, the cervical module, which is currently hidden, it sits right below it. And we'll open that up right about the time the lumbar module ends. And this module will be constructed very similarly in that manner, where there will be, we will have a pre-course quiz, just a knowledge assessment. You'll have readings from Jim's book that are recommended readings. You'll have a skills list and then the reference slides and then fellowship reading that is required for fellowship, but not necessarily required for the certification program. Now, viewing my screen here, I can't see the chat board. So if anyone has any questions, let me review. All right, all is quiet. So what does the course schedule look like for the weekend modules? Weekend modules typically run Friday afternoons, usually starting about anywhere from two to three, I'm assuming. Does everyone usually start, Eric? You're muted, Eric. Probably two o'clock, be two to six on Friday. And then uh, just to make sure we have the proper amount of hours to cover what we're, uh, what we're required to do, um, it'll be eight to five on uh, Saturday and Sunday. I'll tell you right now that the Sunday usually gets a little bit uh, questionable about whether or not we make it to five o'clock. Usually that has to do with my particular travel uh, schedule, <laughs> um, but uh, typically that'll end a little earlier than five o'clock on the Sunday. Yeah. And typically, Eric, on those first modules, let's say you get to the cervical module, what do you usually do on the Friday of the cervical module? The cervical module? Yeah, so we get the well, module two. Yeah, so once we get into the, the second, third, fourth, and, and so on modules, we'll start most Fridays with some sort of review. Um, we'll tend to do some sort of like round robin. We'll get pairs on the tables, and we used to uh, prior to COVID, and we'll see how things shape up once we get out there if we're allowed to do this sort of thing. Um, we'll have a therapist and then a patient on a table. We'll ask for a technique or ask for some sort of examination process. And then we'll just cycle through. We'll have people rotate throughout the room. So we get different, uh, get your hands on different body types, uh, different people, just get a, get a feel for the different types of joints that are out there. Um, and then we'll get into whatever the you know, first section would be, which would probably be anatomy, biomechanics, just kind of a review of those sort of things. Um, and then by the time we're usually done with that stuff, we're usually pretty close to where we'll either be doing some sort of case scenario um, or just answering questions by the end of the day. That's usually a Friday. Yeah, so that's what's nice about this module is you get that chance in that follow-up weekend to then kind of refine and refresh those skills from the prior module. And then as you get to the thoracic spine module, that then now you, which is the third module, you'll do kind of some of the lumbar and then the cervical mod, cervical material on that Friday going on. So the nice thing is, is you get that chance to then kind of revisit these techniques and these topics and refine. And if you have questions or you don't feel comfortable with something, it then gives you that later chance to get it. So it's not a one weekend and done process. You know, it may be the, go ahead, Eric. I was just going to say the, the review stuff actually tends to really spur a lot of questions. Um, just usually the first thing I'll ask when I get to a course on, on that Friday is just, you know, were there any questions we have from the readings for module one, from any of the materials we've presented from any of the Zoom calls or any Jim's videos? Um, you know, once we get into module two and three and beyond. It's usually, do we have any questions from the previous modules? Anything you've seen that didn't seem to make sense in clinic? Most of the time, I don't get a lot of questions when we first start out, um, but then we'll go into the review 
and very typically we'll get a lot of questions based on what we're going through when we're doing the review with the different technique stuff, which is, which is good because it starts gets get your brains working a little bit, get your hands working a little bit, just kind of jump starts the weekend a little bit. So it's a, it's definitely a beneficial component. I think one of the things that, that's different about these courses too, that at first is a little startling is the fact that, you know, like you were there, we don't teach from slides all that often. In other words, it's not like a, a booklet course in a way. A lot of what we do is constructed on Moodle and a lot of the courses question and answer and discussion and teaching techniques. I mean, Eric, that's kind of in your approach. Can you kind of describe your teaching approach? Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, I do have some slide stuff and I can always make that stuff available to everybody when we, when we use it, if it's something that people are wanting to be able to review multiple times. But I'd really rather have, have a situation where we're actually able to have an open discussion about things. I don't want people reading stuff over my shoulder. I want to be able to have the attention on what we're trying to get through. Um, so again, occasionally we'll have some things like that, but most of the time it's going to be me putting up some sort of case scenario. Um, I know in module one, I have a, a, a slideshow of five different cases that are all lumbar pain, all with the exact same presentation, um, but they all have different diagnoses. Um, so again, it's, it's one of those things we kind of use it once in a while, but I'd really rather be able to kind of move around the room, get people to interact. And once we get into the technique stuff, it's not really worth having slides up. Um, I'd rather be able to kind of get in and help you guys with specific techniques. If you're having a hard time with finding the proper vectors or finding proper handhold, any of that sort of stuff, it's easier for me to do it that way and move around the room uh, rather than having everything up on the front board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's just, it's just kind of nice to know that that is the approach. That's kind of why we try to put some of that support material and supporting stuff on Moodle for you. As Eric said, if we use slides, we can always post them for you on the discussion board. We can pop them up in Moodle, but we don't want to just kind of, you know, throw, you know, um, just a hodgepodge of things up online because then it just becomes overwhelming. And we don't want the online portion to feel like, okay, this is overwhelming. We want to kind of know that, okay, you can look at one particular thing and you know the purpose of that one reading. You know that the course manuals or slides we have there, that's, that's foundational material. You can review that for foundational material. You know, watching us teach that in a class for you would be a rather boring two and a half days. So it's just good to kind of work on that foundational material and work on the clinical reasoning portion of it when we're together and have time versus lecturing to you on that. I think it's pretty fair, right, Eric? Yeah, I definitely think so. And, and the first two modules, like Dave was saying, it's mostly differential diagnosis stuff. So there's a lot of fundamental components that we put in there and we try and get kind of a, a found a, a baseline of knowledge to you right away um, because it's stuff that we'll tend to harp on as we go through the courses. Um, so it's one of those things that if we don't introduce it to you, we're, we're probably not going to go into the full depth of everything. Um, we just can't do that in two and a half days. That's why it's a eight module course. I mean, it's a year and a half program to get through. So it's, there's a lot of information, but there's certain things that if you don't understand right away, or at least you don't have some basic knowledge of, you're really going to struggle to get through some of the more advanced courses. Um, and to be honest, that is pretty commonly the stuff that people struggle with when we get to the exams. And, and that's where uh, people tend to have really hard times and their scores start to drop is if you have issues with the basic foundational knowledge stuff, you're really going to struggle with the more complex things. So you'll start getting a lot of that stuff. And again, that's some of the things that I do have some slideshows, some, some handouts for things like that. And I'll, I'll be either sending that off to Dave to get to you guys through Moodle, or I'll have handouts for you in, in class when I get there. So shouldn't have to worry about that stuff. It, like I said, it's stuff that you'll see every single time one of us comes out there to teach a course, you're going to get some component of that. And that's just, again, trying to make sure that you understand the basics. Because uh, if you can understand those basics, those foundational principles, you, you'll do really well in the courses. Yeah, and that's where I think the Zoom sessions are very, are very helpful because, you know, Jim and Eric, they do a really good job of, of covering what are these foundational principles? What are the things that do well in exams? When I, when I see these Zoom sessions, I really see them talking about all the things they test on any oral, practical, or written exam. Really, the, you know, really what they do is it's, they're really prepping you. I mean, you're doing basically the fellowship curriculum, you know, through this process. So if you can finish the oral practical, it is essentially the same oral practical we use for fellowship. And that's where those Zoom sessions are very valuable in preparing you and that even helping that foundational knowledge. But that's where it's kind of on you to be able to go over that material and kind of decide, okay, yeah, I'm not as familiar with the difference between, 
radicular pain and somatic pain. I need to understand that principles. So I need to know, you know, the difference between myelopathy and radiculopathy. You know, these things need to be just things that you kind of, you know, are route. So, but again, it's a eight module program over 16 months. So you don't need to know them today. It's really just, a, it's part of the process. Now, Kelly, I'm not quite sure if that was answers your questions about the weekend courses, but what may be worth it going over quickly is just what, it, what are the different courses in, in the modular format? So this, this document here, the certification modular program, it's actually on the, in the top section of the Moodle and you can review it and what kind of goes over the objectives that are there. You'll see the first one is differential diagnosis, mechanical assessment and treatment of the lumbar spine. The second module, again, does that with, again, the cervical spine we'll cover. The third module then covers the thoracic spine with much of the differential work being done in the first two modules. We will do differential diagnosis in the thoracic spine, but this module is a really kind of a change of pace from the first two in that this is a very technique manipulative heavy model where we, we, you will look at anterior translation, anterior subluxations, translations, you know, rib manipulations from, you know, I, you know, depending on where you are, you may get down as far as the thoracolumbar lumbar junction up to first and second rib manipulations and kind of complex differential diagnosis. So that from a technique standpoint, is a very technique heavy model, a module, and it's followed by module four, which is peripheral assessment and treatment or biomechanical assessment and treatment of peripheral joints. It's probably one of my favorite modules in the sense that this is also a technique heavy module, but really what you take away from this one is not only the manipulative techniques for the peripheral joints, but it's a kind of a very good understanding of the biomechanics. And what I've learned in these modules and taking these modules I use on a daily basis and looking at people from a biomechanical approach. So as much as we may talk about manipulation mobilization, this is really about, you know, spinal biomechanics and peripheral biomechanics. What are proper, what are improper, what is jammed and what is hypermobile. And you'll find oftentimes it's not so much about identifying the, the stuck segment as is more valuable to identify the hypermobile or unstable segment. And how do I work around that? So I find that incredibly valuable. And that's where the, the peripheral manipulation course number four is super valuable if you're seeing active people or even older people from an authoritative standpoint. Modules five and six now revisit, you know, basically advanced techniques and advanced manipulative techniques of the cervical spine and lumbar spine. So in the cervical spine, we're gonna learn, okay, how do you manipulate oncovertebral joints? You know, what are more complex techniques for manipulating the cervical spine or CT junction? You know, sometimes as you get into the advanced, probably not this one here, but again, advanced courses, we'll look a little bit at the upper cranial vertebral joints, whether it's biomechanical assessment. And sometimes it's, some people do it in module five, sometimes they're rolled into later, later modules, but we'll look at that. That's where you'll get into more, we'll talk about cervogenic headaches. And again, similarly in the lumbar module, you have advanced techniques in the lumbar spine in module six. Module seven and eight, there's an upper quadrant and the lower quadrant module. And really what this does at this one is kind of cumulative. It takes the techniques and the differentials you've learned in the first six modules. And it now takes those and now we go into regional integration. We go into how does the thoracic spine influence your cervogenic headache? You know, how do we tie what's going on up at C1, C2, C3 to what may be happening down at C7 or maybe T4 or maybe at the TL junction? Similarly, you're gonna look at your lumbar problem. Is it coming from the subtalar joint? Is it coming from the hip? Or, you know, which is driving what? Is your hip driving the foot mechanics you're seeing? So what you're able to do with these courses or what we want to do when we finish is to be able to move between regions and tie in relationships. You know, is it that, okay, I have a, you know, a, a jammed subtalar joint and my navicular has gone dorsal on the talus and that internally rotates my lower leg, which changes muscle firing pattern around the hip. And now my hip is shifted anteriorly and medially rotated. So now my thoracic spine is now rotated. So now I have a TL junction problem, but you can kind of go between now, which is kind of fun to be in how the ankle may influence a TL junction problem or TL junction down to the foot. So those are fun courses. It's, it's really, you know, it can be complex thought, but it's fun. It's really nice for those patients where you just feel like you're missing something and not seeing something. It really kind of tries to focus on these complex regional relationships. And it really kind of pulls together 
the first foundational six modules. Eric, anything you'd like to add to that? No, I mean, I, th I think you kind of cover pretty much my thought process. I, I love modules three and four. They're, they're probably my two favorite yeah, modules to teach because it, there is a ton of lab stuff in there. Um, it's, it's great for you guys specifically because we give you just a bunch of tools that you can go into clinic that Monday and start using. Whereas when you're in modules one and two, we're, we're really laying a lot of foundational stuff. There's some examination processes that can be done and there's there's some technique stuff, but it's just that you, you're really trying to learn more what the system is and how to how to integrate that system into what you're already using in clinic, things like that. Um, so three and four really is where things kind of take off. Um, you know, uh, five and six are, they're good integration courses. We get into some of the more complex stuff. Uh, you know, usually when I'll do module six, I'll do upper cervical, at least biomechanics and mobilizations yeah. and such. Um, I believe we're still holding off on manipulation on that um, mm -hmm. until some of the more advanced courses. But um, module five, we're going to get a t we get a ton of um, SI joint pelvic um, techniques, things of that nature. We get back into the hip a little bit, uh, making sure that we know kind of what's going on with that. Um, and then we also we'll also kind of clean up some things that we don't pick up in modules in module four for the peripheral segments. Right. So. Um, in module four, we won't cover the shoulder. We'll get that in module six, typically. Um, in module five, we'll typically cover the patellofemoral joint, which won't, we, we typically won't get to in module four either. So there's some, there's some bits and pieces that we have to clean up. But that's the good thing about having the eight module system here is that if we don't get to something, there's going to be another module coming up where we can kind of clean that up, make sure we have a nice seamless transition so you guys get everything you need. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a good system. You guys, if you if you do the work, if you follow through the uh, the Moodle stuff, the online stuff, if you look at Jim's videos and go to the Zoom sessions, you guys should do great. We are doing a lot more face to face stuff now than we've ever done before. Um, obviously, the pandemic kind of shoehorned us into a lot of this stuff when we were dealing with this, but it, it turned out to be a really kind of a beneficial thing for the way we uh, kind of present some of this this material, um, so just because. The more I think you can hear us talk about it, the more chances you have to ask questions, the more you get a chance to kind of uh, integrate what you're seeing in clinic with the way we tend to think of things and the way we tend to teach things, I think the better you'll understand it. So hopefully that, that works out that way, but I think, it, I think it's gonna be good for you guys. Yeah, it's kind of nice. I mean, like Eric and myself, you know, we're both practicing clinicians too. So it's not like we have separation from what we teach and what we're doing. You know, we're, you know, I'm using all these things, you know, regularly and they're, and they're you know, basically daily. So, you know, that's what's also helpful, too, is that, yeah, we've, we've seen these patients and, you know, we also know the ones that, you know, these aren't appropriate for. And that's always kind of nice to identify as well as knowing that, OK, this isn't the patient for these this particular skill set. That's where you need that other skill set or they need to be referred out. It's not that we feel like we can treat everybody but there's a good many people where this is very helpful. And I think that deeper biomechanical knowledge that you'll have really helps give you some insight. Yep, totally agree. That, Eric, is there anything you feel that we missed in this discussion? You know, I don't think so. Um, I think, um, I think one of the biggest things, one of the biggest questions that we get a lot is, is all about the course material and people tend to want to have like a, you know, big fat binder full of papers that they can take notes on and stuff like that. And if, if you're that type of learner, then I would definitely recommend, you know, bringing something that you can kind of follow along with. So whether that's an individual notebook for each module, or if you want to do yourself a, you know, a binder, something of that nature, we've had a lot of questions about stuff like that. Um, but again, we don't want to be, have you guys flipping through pages, looking for stuff that we're talking about. We want to just have you hear it from us. Um, and if you have any particular questions about it, it's just easy to ask us. And I think we're going to have a lot more methods for you to get a hold of us nowadays than we used to have. So um, that'd probably be the one recommendation that I make um, is to try and do that, something like that, so that you have a system set up for yourself um, so that you can go back and look through these things when you have questions. Sorry, got bugs all over me out here. <laughs> yeah we don't we generally don't move, remove you from the modules so we we don't close it all for you so people took our courses two three years ago they still have access to the videos and material 
you can download the skill sheets and the links are going to YouTube. So those links will be valid. So, you know, if you download the paper, you can download Jim's manual and have it. So a lot of material that we have on there is available for you to download. And if you download the PDF with the links, then you'll be able to get on and, uh, and see the videos, you know, whether it's now or whether it's five years from now. Any questions, any concerns? I mean, really what I want to do is I want to make sure that we assuage any fears or reservations you have about this, because this should be a really positive experience for you. Yeah. You guys will have questions eventually, I believe, believe that. So yeah, if you don't have them today, that's okay. So. What I'll do is probably by tomorrow, I'm going to post some of the gym's first kind of like tutorial videos. You can get a sense of that. I would peruse the lumbar spine chapter a bit that I have posted up there in Jim's reasoning process. It gives you an insight into the thought process. And the book's a little dated. And actually, funny one of the things we're going to do is I read it. One of the things we decided is that I decided that, you know, though the book is, you know, probably pushing 20 years old, you know, the reasoning process hasn't changed. What tends to happen with evidence, it tends to support what this clinical reasoning process that people have used for 30 or 40 years is that the new evidence that comes out kind of refines it, but it supports it. That's often the world in PT is that what's old is new again. You know, I don't think uh, you know, a lot of the techniques that we see now have been kind of remanufactured over the years. So that's what you'll find in this differential diagnosis book that we'll be adding, you know, here are the resources that are more current that support the thought process behind it. But what's nice about it, it's succinct in it. After you get used to it, it's very clean and it's very effective for a clinician. Yeah, it's a, gr it's a great book. It's very criterion based. So it's based off of anatomy, physiology, biomechanics, those sort of things. And, you know, realistically, there's some, there's some changes that occur to those uh, sort of sciences, foundational sciences as life goes on, but they're not so substantial that it's going to be so outdated. Um, I still review that book on a very consistent mm -hmm. basis, especially when I'm going out to teach courses, because it's it's still a good reference to have. Yeah, so we'll be going over that a bit, and we'll, we'll probably even try at some point to put up some cases on the discussion board. And depending on people's level of uh, responsiveness, sometimes it makes for a nice discussion, sometimes it's a little bit of crickets and tumbleweeds, but that really depends on the cohort. Yeah. So I, that's about all I have, unless anyone has any questions for me. Uh, I think Julius came on late and what I will do is I will upload this to YouTube and I will send this link out to people so they can kind of review this video in case they weren't here. So Julius, if you missed anything, it's in there. And if you have any questions for us, we'd be happy to answer them now or, you know, on the discussion board online. Did you guys say... Do we have access to that yet? Are we waiting for a link for that? So your voice is breaking up a little bit. Do we ask that access to I couldn't quite the make discussion that. board? Oh, the discussion board. You should have access to the discussion board now. You should be able to post on it. Where, maybe I have missed an email somewhere. Where did I, where did I found that access? Okay. Have you logged on to the, uh, the website yet, the MTI Squared website? No, I have not. Okay, let me let me go find it. I can search emails, but that's I have not. So that's why I'm. Just have like you? Okay. Well, did you, did you did you receive the email with the login information? When I. It would have been on Friday. <laughs> Um, this is the best time to send an email right before you take a three-day holiday weekend. So I'm sure you were all wrapped up in your work email on Friday afternoon. I was waiting eagerly for that email. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one. Is that with the words? Yes, yes. So it'll log on to the online platform. Yes, I got it. Good. And and once you log on, here's the clip. It'll be right here. You're going to log on to the page, and this okay. page will come up here, which is the first page is just kind of the the course material that, that, that is on there, which is the Jim's video introduction, which if you did this, you'll find that it's kind of, it's an overview of that. Jim, Jim sometimes, cause it's funny, you know, he's from the, uh, 
from the, the not so wealthy area of London in his voice. So everything he says sounds more intimidating on video, <laughs> but it's really not as intimidating as he sounds. Sorry, you see that video sometimes, it's like, holy cow, this looks scary. But I'm here to, switch, to assure you this is not scary. So the discussion board is the second link right below it. The one my, kind of my cursor's on right now. You can click on that. Yes. And when you, link, when you click on that link, you'll be able to go to the bottom. And from there, you should be able to kind of basically right up here, it says post a new topic. And you can post your questions there on the discussion board. Thank you. I think you might have at the beginning. I was having a little bit of technical difficulties. So that definitely answers that. Thank you. Uh, no problem. <laughs> Chat. There's any more questions in the chat? I don't see any more questions. Well, that said, I don't want to thank you for your time. What I will do is I'll be sending you, I don't want to bludgeon you with emails. So I'll try and kind of keep it to once a week. I'll send you emails on when videos get released. And I may even just put out a case on the discussion board from Jim's manual, one of those first cases. We may try and do a couple of those cases from the book a month now, you can kind of read through the cases and they'll talk you through them. But it's nice just to see the case on the board and figure out how did he get to this differential diagnosis. And what you're going to see over the period of 18 months, it'll be, you know, what's great about it is for, it can be formulaic in your mind and you'll start to recognize the pattern. And then it, it becomes very route, which is good. With that said, I think we're all set. Anything else, Eric? Nope, I think we're good. Guys, hey, thanks for taking your time this evening to come out and uh, and do this. And uh, and I look forward to meeting all the courses. I think I think I'll be out for the second cervical. Eric will be doing the first one and the majority of the courses as well. And uh, Jim will be online up until seven and eight and uh, be there. But uh, you know, it's a wonderful chance to mentor with Jim Meadows, and uh, it's a unique opportunity. I think I think you know I feel very fortunate just to be able to do this and tag along with Jim and do it. So I hope this is a, is a good experience for you as well. And you take a lot away from it. It's always hard to appreciate that on the front end, but I think on the back end, you'll, you'll be very happy with your decision to do this. And uh, I'll do everything I can to kind of make sure that you're happy. So if you have any problems, please reach out to me. I'm here to help you. It's my job. That said, uh, everyone have a good night. Have a good one, everybody. Look forward to meeting y'all. Take care.